Hi everyone, this is Chetan Nayak. So this video is a quick demonstration of ETW event write based detections and evasions for .NET assemblies. How it can be detected by manually analyzing a specific uh, executable or a payload in memory and how we can evade that with hardware breakpoints. So I have two operating systems here, both of them Windows and I have uh, this piece of code here which loads our uh, C-sharp .NET into memory and executes it. Currently I have disabled the patching of ETW. So let me just compile it and see what it looks like. So if I execute it, now before I execute it, if I scroll down, you can see I have added a wait for single object over here, which will continuously wait till we type control C and then it will exit. We'll use this to quickly analyze our code into memory. I'll execute this. It's waiting right now and you can see that there were no ETW uh, event write patches. If you go to the process hacker and take a look at the .NET assemblies, you will see the default app domain in which the seedbelt.NET was loaded. This is something that your EDR also uses to track down several artifacts into memory. Let me close it and patch the ETW event write this time, which is basically a part of your ntdll.dll. Let me build it again. Let's run it and this time I have patched it. So if I go back and let me take a look at this, it won't respond back with any value here. The reason for that is because the ETW is patched and it is simply returning 0, 0, 0. As you can see, C3 stands for red and it's simply returning 0 in this case and which is simply means that it is not returning anything at all. And that is why the operation has timed out. You can quickly attach your debugger to the executable and take a look at it into memory. So I'll type etw event write, follow it into disassembler and you can see the red instruction that has been added. So the moment it gets executed, it will quickly do a return and uh, it will be called back again. So you would uh, get up something like an operation timed out over here without getting the legitimate assembly. Most of the time, if you're doing any kind of live analysis, this should be uh, fairly easy to identify in every process. Just go to every process, take a look at the .NET assemblies. If they're not getting loaded, it means someone has passed the ETW event right and they have forgotten unpatching it, which is usually the case with most open source tools these days. Most of them don't uh, repatch it again and again because they don't want to call virtual protect over and over again in this case to uh, make modifications to the values in memory. Now let's see how this would look like here. I have two pieces of code. I'll quickly stop this uh, ETW tracing session that I have here. Now uh, the ETW uh, trace ETW.exe can start, stop and read on sessions on uh, logman providers. So if I just start, let's say Ninja trace over here. And if I type logman query hyphen ETS, you can see the, that we have registered our own provider here to read up the ETW sessions in this case. So for example, if I load something like let's say PowerShell and if I just exit it, it should pop show up over here that our assembly was loaded in which process it was loaded and the thread in which it was loaded as well. But this thread is not necessarily going to be your main thread. This is your CLR.DLL thread which is responsible for, uh, for returning you the correct assembly names here. Now let's see how it looks like in case of brute retail. So uh, let me execute this all over again. I'll quickly start my code. So we will be using hardware breakpoints instead of uh, rewriting our ETW event write and AMSI scan buffer in this case. I will save my payload to the documents directory, compile it with a very simple script here. Remember that in this specific system, we have our uh, antivirus enabled. As you can see, everything is currently enabled over here. Even the uh, intelligence updates are uh, active. So if I simply copy something like maybe let's say internal monolog.exe to my documents, and if I execute it, it should quickly get blocked over here. You can see I should probably get a notification or it should directly get killed over here right away. Yeah. As you can see that it was quickly detected and blocked by your defender in this case, which is fine because we are not going to uh, use it. We are also not going to patch anything in memory. Let's see how it looks like. 
So we have our payload created. I have called, yeah, I think I already did that. So we should have our executable here called as bin to inject. So I'll just double click this. Let's see if we get a connection back, provided that Defender does not kill our payload already. And you can see we have our connection back even with the default payload. So now what we will do is we will just type pwd and I will load this internal monologue code into my sharp inline command which simply takes a C sharp executable, loads it into memory, runs it and gives us a response back. If I type slash, let's say internal monologue.exe, let's see if we get blocked by the ETW event write, blocked or logged as well by our tracer. You can see we have received our response back. If I go back here, you will see, you can see that we don't have any telemetry in this specific case, nor was it blocked by the EDR. Let's see what it looks like over here. We can see that there is no trace of uh, our internal monologue in this case. Similarly, if I also execute, let's say, uh, seatbelt.exe, now it's in our own memory. Remember that we are not forking and running. It's all in our own current process itself. And if we go back, let me kill and refresh it. We can see there are no .NET assemblies that are currently loaded. All of these, all of these information are just uh, uh, basic information that doesn't get you anywhere. And this is normal. This is how it should look like because if you get a response, something like what we received over here in our case, like uh, operation timed out, that means there is something really suspicious going on because that should never be the scenario. In this case, you can see that we are receiving a legitimate response, which is a bit hard to identify what is going on. So let's attach it to our process and see what is happening here. You can see our hardware breakpoints are not currently enabled in this specific case. If I go back and uh, yeah, to my, and let me execute this again. Let's see what happens. We can see that a single step exception has been raised. And if I scroll down, you can see our DR zero and one registers have been set over here the zero for AMSI scan buffer and one for explicitly ETW event write, which means that every time the CLR gets loaded, these hardware breakpoints will be enabled, which will allow us to reroute our instructions for our AMSI scan buffer, as well as for ETW event write without having to perform any kind of patching into memory. So I'll just let it run. It, it, uh, these are just a bunch of exceptions for our code and we should quickly get our response back. Perfect. So this is a quick example as to how you can evade certain artifacts by using hardware breakpoints, not making sure that you're not using hardware breakpoints everywhere. You can see that th these are erased and they're only enabled when the .NET is currently loaded. Because unlike some command and control centers which uh, keep this active for all the time, you can simply use something like get thread context and take a look at the registers over here to identify whether the main thread is actually containing the DR registers which are enabled. If they are not, then you don't have something to worry about. But if the main thread also has your DR registers enabled, then that is something that you should have to worry about in this case. And uh, then it means there is something suspicious totally going on. So I think that would be all for this specific video from my end on evasions and detections part. I have a few more videos lined up which I'll be releasing in the uh, upcoming few days. But uh, that would be all for this specific video then.